Hello and welcome to the sixth video in this series looking at the MVD3 charting library. So we're here directly from the last video, uh, refreshing some data here and seeing our dynamically rendered graph. Each time the data is regenerated, we can clear it and we can ask for a button to actually draw our chart as well. All very nice. So what I'd like to do in this video is I'd like to show you how you can force the scale on the Y axis. So you notice here I might want on this graph, for example, to go from minus 100 to plus 100 and not always be from the, the lowest to the highest of the actual values that there are. So I want to show you how you do this. It's quite simple, but again with MED3 everything is, but it's just a matter of knowing where to look. So let's go and dive into the code then and see how we do this. Um, there's going to be a bit of copy and paste in this one as well, because I'd actually like to have the, to be able to type into the app the uh, upper and lower for the Y and see the effect on the graph itself because it doesn't always do what you think it uh, it might. How do you find it? Well, inside the NVD3 library, which you've had a look at uh, in some previous videos, if I remember correctly, uh, in the folder source, in models, in discrete bar, you can search for force Y and in fact it's available in a lot of graphs and it says here zero is forced, uh, forced by default. Um, this actually it's built to take two values, a min and a max. So a list uh, with two values like uh, like so, something like this. I'll leave this and not change the code. I'll leave this as it is now. Um, but it can also take single numbers. And to be honest, I've been fiddling around a long time with the single numbers and I couldn't quite work out exactly under what circumstances it was applying what where. It did have something to do with whether your minimum, say, was um, actually above the minimum of the values you had available and stuff, but it's always, um, and we'll see when we play with the app, safe to give two values, I think, if you're going to give them for a max and and a min. Or you can just give nothing and then it'll uh, default to what it's defaulting to, which is what we see in the app here, where it puts our axis with a, um, a min and a max perfectly to make our values all look as uh, visible as possible. So let's have a look then. Uh, how are we going to set about setting our force Y? Well, it's very, very easy. The first thing we're going to do is going to add some HTML in, and I've said many times on my videos, I'm not a designer or anything. I'm going to dump some code in here, which I'd highly recommend you just paste in yourselves because I'm not really interested in learning too much about uh, Bootstrap or HTML. Um, I think this is this is the best way I found the things hacking things together very, very quickly. But if I refresh the site now, and see what we've ended up with just to explain. We've now ended up with uh, a label for our min y where I'm going to say what I want the minimum value on the y-axis of y to be and the max y and when I click on the force y the y-axis will actually change dynamically on my graph so I can actually for the same set of data view the effect of a few different values for minimum and maximum y. Okay, so now we've done the horrible part, which is the uh, HTML, and horrible includes the, the formatting here. We can go into the nicer part, which is the code. Of course, um, going back to the HTML here, we've added in a button here, this force Y button. So we will need to hook up another button at some point. Um, and let's go back into the code then and uh, see how we're, we're going to do all of this. Well, it's actually uh, quite simple. The only thing you have to set is um, inside the draw chart here, somewhere down here, you simply need to say chart dot and then force y and inside brackets simply give the list of values that you actually want to give and you're actually done, you're okay. But we want to do that a bit more dynamically from our front end. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to actually say um, let's put some arguments into our draw chart and what I'd actually like to say is if we actually have our arguments, we'll actually try and force our Y. Otherwise, we won't bother doing anything. So I'm just going to replace that code here with an if, which I've prepared because I'm really conscious of being too slow on some of these videos. Um, so now what I'm saying is that if I've actually sent anything into draw chart uh, as an argument there, then I'm going to make lots of assumptions in this video, by the way, that we're not going to do any checking for any typing errors or letters or anything. We're going to assume we've put sensible values in. I'll log that we're actually forcing Y and log to the console what we're forcing it to. And here's the key line then, the only new line really in this video, which is you just use the chart.force Y here with the arguments that come in and that will then force the Y axis to whatever we want it to be. The only thing that remains then actually is to write a new function which actually does this forcing Y for us. So I'm just going to make a new function and I'm going to call this uh, force Y axis and set this equal then to function. 
And the first thing I need to do is use plain old jQuery. Uh, the parameters that I enter, the text are called, the IDs are in min y and in uh, max y there, which is hopefully is fairly sensible to understand. Again, I've pre-prepared this code uh, here. So I'm just using jQuery to get the value that's in the input for the in min y, for the in max y, log them to the console. I'm making the assumption, of course, that I'm not going to trick myself or trip myself up here. And therefore, um, uh, they will be numbers. I'm not going to put letters or something which will break the program. And then I simply need to say, okay, that uh, if, and I'm just going to make this, there are lots of variants we could do here, but I'm going to say that if uh, min y is not a blank space, then I've definitely entered something. I'm not trying to be stupid with myself or anything like this. And then I'm just going to say, okay, if we haven't got anything for uh, min y, then assume that we don't want the y axis forced in any kind of way. We'll just draw the chart as normal as we did before. Otherwise, what we're going to do, we're going to draw our chart, and this time what we're going to do is send in our arguments. And as I said before, the force y, what it actually has to be is it has to be a list of two numbers, um, like so, and that's it. So what we'll do is then we'll pass, we will call the JavaScript function uh, pass int to pass in the uh, min y and the max y, and that's actually all there is to it. That's all we need to do to be able to force our y-axis to whatever we've specified in the front end. Of course, we're missing a couple of things because we haven't actually hooked up our button yet from the front end, so let's do that now. Let's just take the clear chart button here. Let's just go down here. I've forgotten the name of the button already. Here we are, btn force y, go back. Put that in here. I'll call this btn force y just here. And now what I want to be able to do is call my force y axis function. And that should be everything we need. I'm just going to double check. So if we ever click this force y axis, then we call the force y axis function. That then gets the values entered. If we've entered some values, then let's call draw chart, sending in the integers that we've entered. And here we're saying if we've got some arguments, let's log them to the console and now draw our chart forcing the Y to that list. Good, that looks all good. And with any luck, we should be able to switch back to the application. I'll do a refresh and see the Y axis ready to be forced. So let's have a look at the first chart we've got here. So we've got up to 23 down to minus 35. So let's just uh, put min Y at minus 100 and max Y at 100 and hit force y and now you can see that we have indeed forced the axis in that range let's put max y at uh, 300 and again we forced it interestingly if i just move max y let's say back to 50 and now i'll move min y back to minus 20 so we're going to miss off this minus 35 what actually happens is nvd3 still draws so it won't force inside the range of the values that you've got in your graph to present it's one of the things to bear in mind, which I'm sure you'll find out very quickly. In fact, if you just submit one number, so not a list of two numbers, but you just select, submit uh, one numbers in, in, in square brackets, um, so effectively a list of just one, what it will do is take that number as a minimum. If it can't apply it, then try and apply that number to, as the maximum for the Y. That I know and I've seen. Um, how you then specify nothing for the minimum but something for the maximum, I'm not sure. But specify both of them, you do it in this way. And a classic use for this that uh, I've used a lot myself, for instance, is when you call from your API your data, you run a quick loop over the values you want to present, and maybe you want your axis always to be just slightly above uh, each of the maximum minimum values in the graph, so it just looks a little bit nater. So you can programmatically then set how you want your y-axis in terms of range to look. Okay then, so that's it for this video. I hope that's made uh, some sense and helps you a little bit with the graphing. Uh, thanks very much for watching and see you in the next one.